This video is brought to you by StoneAgeGamer.com, a fantastic site for retro games, systems, accessories, and more. Be sure to check out StoneAgeGamer.com. Skip it a button, da up. What's going on, folks? Rich of Review Tech USA, and you are looking at, again, a Sega Genesis. It's an awesome system. It was released in the States in 1989. Uh, it was released as the uh, Sega Mega Drive in Japan in 1988. It was 16-bit, had a bunch of very delicious games for it, and it's still fun to play to this day. Even if you weren't around in the late 80s and early to mid-90s when this was around, or you weren't into gaming and you are now, still a bunch of good games for it. It has a ginormous library of very good games um, all across the board. Moving on from that so I don't ramble. And you may want to pick this system up. Okay, you're not into emulation, which I know a billion of you are going to talk about emulation, I'll get to that later. And you may want to get the actual console to play those games. But you may have a new HDTV. And most HDTVs out there, like my new Sharp TV and even my No Name TV from Best Buy, both of them at best have component. Guess what this doesn't have? It doesn't have component. You're At best, you're going to be getting, at least in the States anyway, you're going to be getting composite. See, let's go on a little history lesson here. Let's start from the very beginning. Well, not the very beginning, but you, at least when I started really gaming at like four or five years old here. This is how I used to hook up my Nintendo. If it'll focus. Tap here. This is how I used to hook up my Nintendo to my TV back in the day. It was an RF switch. This is the absolute most piss poor way to get a picture out of a console. But back in the day, there were a lot of times TVs only had RF. And what RF would do is it would, is that radio frequency. You would have to actually tune into a channel, just like you would from cable, and that's how you would see your game. The picture quality was awful. It, the sound would have white noise to it, even if it was a good RF, RF modulator in the console. Uh, the picture, especially, the, I've noticed with the Genesis, at least in the States, maybe it was different with the Mega Drive. Um, Games would, they were kind of like the colors would be really awful. And I've tried multiple Genesis back in the day with the RF, and you would see color banding. And RF was god awful, okay? It was just terrible. But back in the eight, late, even mid to late 80s, a lot of TVs it was the only way you could hook them up. I mean, hell, the uh, TurboGrafx 16 that came out in 87, I believe, as the PC engine in Japan. And the original TurboGrafx, not the uh, Core graphics, I believe it was called. The original um, one only had RF on it. And in the States, TurboGrafx-16 only had RF on it, because that was what it was called here. It was not called the PC Engine. It was called the TurboGrafx-16. And you could only do RF. I don't know what they were smoking with that, but anyway, that is RF. So I remember I had a Magnumbox CGA monitor that also was had a composite input, and you could hook up composite to it. So an upgrade was, as I dig through my cables here, an upgrade was composite. Now the Genesis didn't have stereo out of its AV out, but composite is video, audio, left channel audio, and the red is right channel. And this was a huge step up, a ginormous step up from RF. But with this, this is all we had in the States. I mean, we had S-Video 2 and... Uh, what other formats we have? We had component later on, but this had basically takes all the red, the green, the blue, um, the color burst, all the different stuff and combines it into uh, one jack. And because you have everything going into the, all those different outputs going into this one AV, into this one jack, the color gets muddled. I know I'm not explaining it great, but you get what I'm trying to say. The color, because you're taking all those different signals and putting it into this one jack. Colors get muddled. You know, the, when you try, the images lose clarity. But again, back in the 80s, compared to RF, it was a big difference. Okay. And plus, on top of it, the audio, because with RF, everything was combined, including the audio. You had stereo audio or at least mono audio. So it was a substantial difference, even though all the different signals were smushed together to be able to output out of this one RCA or composite jack. So, and people, even until like the mid 2000s, this was still pretty damn mainstream. It's just starting to go away now because new TVs don't have it anymore. But, you know, this was 
shit, I can't believe how long people used this for and dealt with the piss poor picture quality. But I mean, we had other things like S video and so on and so forth. But the States really, we, that was the main way to get video out of DVD players, game consoles till honestly fairly recently. But over in Europe, don't mind me reaching over here, they had something called SCART. Now, SCART is a weird format. Well, it's not weird, but it's actually pretty genius. I don't know why we didn't actually do something similar in the States, but it may look weird. Very funky jack. It almost looks like someone took a VGA, a VGA, the end of a VGA cable and just stretched it out. But this has audio, okay, left and right channel, stereo, whole bunch of other stuff, red, green, and blue separated, unlike composite that has everything scrunched together coming out of one signal. This has everything separated. So over in Europe and different regions that use SCART, they were actually getting a shitload better picture quality. I didn't know that. I thought SCART was just a oversized composite. I didn't know until fairly recently that this actually output much better picture quality. I mean, it's antiquated now. I just, I mean, it boggles my mind. We never had it, No, but it, it's spilt milk that's dead and rotten because this is a standard definition format and we moved on to HDMI and, and component. Even though component, all analog signals or all analog inputs and outputs from game consoles and everything are going away. I mean, look at the eighth generation of consoles, the Xbox One and PS4. They don't even have anything analog. I mean, the Wii U is the only one that you could get component cables for, as far as I know right now. But the Xbox One, it's HDMI, and that is it. But anyway, so they had this superior format, SCART, overseas in Europe and in different regions. And going back to the Genesis, a lot of people think the best you could get out of this, in the States anyway, is composite. And you're dead wrong. The Genesis actually outputs RGB, which this cable, SCART, supports RGB. You see where I'm going? Now, here's another interesting thing I got. I saw another other video. I forgot the guy's YouTube name. Um, I actually, there was a video showing how he converted SCART to HDMI. He actually got this box here. It's the uh, HD video converter. It's converts SCAR to HDMI to 720p or 1080p. He said this thing looks like it was built like crap. And I mean, the box that it came in is pretty, you know, generic and cheesy, but this thing's all metal and feels actually pretty substantial. But what this does, okay, because the Genesis pumps out crystal clear RGB, which is gorgeous. You're going to see in a few minutes how nice it looks. So what this does is it takes the RGB from SCART, excuse me while I autofocus here again, it takes the RGB from SCART, actually at the power of two, and converts it either to 720p or 1080p signal so you could actually view it on a modern HD TV. Because think about it, if you don't have this box, okay, I mean, there's other ways you could do it too, I'll show you in a second. If you don't have something like this or some kind of converter, whether it be composite or <laughs> composite HDMI or, you know, RGB to HDMI, you can't use the Genesis on a modern TV. Now, let me do a side note here for a second, because I know a billion people are going to say this and it's going to drive me absolutely insane. I know emulators exist. <laughs> okay. Why would I get this when I could play on an emulator? Look. First off, there's people out there, including myself, that like to play on the original console. You know there's going to be accurate sound. You know there's going to be 100% compatibility. Yes, there are excellent emulators out there, and I enjoy them. But no emulator is perfect. The perfect example today, I was using ZSNES and SNES 9X, because I was kind of doing, just playing around with them, because I knew I was making this video. And you know what? Now, I have two high-end gaming PCs, and I have game modes on both of my TVs, and I have monitors. And the SNES 9X had lag, very minor lag, but it was still enough to hinder the gameplay. And the ZSNES, now you may have different hardware. Everyone's hardware is going to be different, so even, you know, even though I have high-end powerful rigs, maybe I, you wouldn't get lag on yours. And then there's a ZSNES that actually had zero lag on both of my rigs, but the sound emulation for Super Nintendo was meh. 
That's why people like going back, even if they're not hardcore collectors, they like going back to the original hardware. And for you guys telling me out there that there are emulators, I have been using emulators when you weren't even an erection in your father's pants. I was using Nesticle back in the late and mid 90s. I was using, there was Genesis, the Sega Genesis emulator from the same guy who made Nesticle. I know they exist. This is a different market. If you don't care about the original hardware and just want to play on emulators, see you later. This video is not for you. But anyway, I had to just get it off my chest. Anyway, getting back to this. So yeah, so the Genesis has RGB, which is crystal clear. The guys over in Europe and in different regions that use SCAR got to enjoy that. We got jack shit in the States and we just got composite, which, like I said, has all the different signals combined and it just step up from RF, but looks like shit. Now, this isn't another me trying to sell what we're trying to do, but I'll show you. Uh, there's also this box here, which is composite to HDMI and what we did with another Genesis, but, and I'm kind of showing you what we're doing as well. Uh, this Genesis has this composite because we just did a test run. We do originally, we always wanted to do RGB. We're going to get this in here somehow into the Genesis. But inside this Sega Genesis, we uh, changed all the way the whole power distribution system works. Um, we added new switching regulators and we had to do a whole bunch of other stuff. This is soldered directly onto the video output of the Genesis. And we made a Genesis that runs off one original Sega Genesis power supply, nothing else is needed, that has HDMI output built right into it. Kind of cool. <laughs> but the problem is this is just composite. Like I said, it was a test run. We succeeded to do it. Now we're excited to try to get this in there. We're just waiting for some parts to come overseas to make it happen. But, you know, this is our ultimate goal. Now, for those of you out there who are interested in this, hopefully I got rid of all the pro emulation guys, which I have nothing against emulation to, you're probably wondering how much of a difference RGB makes. I knew it made a difference. I watched some YouTube videos, but I'm letting you know right now, it's jaw dropping. There's one disclaimer I'm going to give though. Look at my fat fingers. Pay attention though. This is serious. Not that serious, but I'm just being a wise ass. It's not actual HD. The Genesis was a system that was released. Mega Drive, if you include it, in 1987. And it was came out in 1988 in the States. Okay? That's a very long time ago. You were not getting true 720p or 1080p out of this system. It's going to be upscaled. The second thing, too, for the people who are super purists but still want to do this, okay? When you upscale, you lose a little bit, a minute amount of quality. Sometimes. Not even always. Okay? So you may want to go, they have other boxes you could get that actually don't upscale the Genesis signal and just makes the RGB into component because there is a difference between RGB and component. I don't know the differences, but there is more, there's signals combined with the red, green, and blue on component that everything here is separated. So you do need to get a conversion box to make a component. You can't just try to solder RGB out and plug it into a TV. So this is going to upscale. If you're not into upscaling, you may want to look for something different. Also, too, there's people from, because if you're really into the true original Sega Genesis experience, I don't know why I just sung the word true. The Genesis had a limited color palette, okay? It, it was 64 simultaneous colors on screen, I believe, out of 512. This is just coming off. I didn't even know I was going to talk about this. It's just coming off the top of my head right now. Um, so if I'm wrong about, I know the 64 simultaneous colors on screen at once is accurate, but the 512 color palette, maybe it's smaller, maybe it's bigger. I think I'm right though with that. What developers did, especially later life Genesis games to get around that is they used a trick called dithering. Uh, what dithering is, is they would take, if I remember to get a picture of this, I'll put it in the video. They would take two different colors, um, and, and like use strands of them 
And they would just combine them together because they knew the signal quality from composite was poor. And what composite would do is kind of combine those colors together to make a different color. So when they were trying to make a sunset or a transparent waterfall in Sonic the Hedgehog, they would have these two colors combined together and it would kind of work its magic so they could get around the limited color palette. When you get high resolution stuff, as I almost bust my Genesis up here, when you get high resolution stuff like RGB, converted to HDMI, it's gonna be a much prettier picture, which in turn actually takes away that dithering trick. So you're gonna like when the waterfall, I will actually see in a second, because I actually haven't used this in that one level, the waterfall inside the hedgehog will actually look like stripes. So whenever they use dithering with this high resolution, which wasn't all the time, because so it's gonna still gonna be, I still would rather play with this than use composite. Whenever they use dithering, you're going to notice it. Whereas before, when you use composite or RF, you wouldn't notice it. Just some other interesting information there. So anyway, all right, I'm going to go hook this up to my capture card because I know it works. And I'm going to show you some gameplay footage from the Sega Genesis with this arch with the uh, SCAR cable to uh, HDMI converter. And you will see, I'm going to try the best to encode this video with the best quality possible. And you will see how damn huge of a difference it is using this. And it, it blew me away. And I'm hoping this YouTube video does it justice. Here we go. All right, folks. And right now we are looking at super ghouls and ghosts. And even with this heavily compressed video, by the time you're actually looking at it, it will be compressed four times. You are still, because I've seen it on YouTube, so I know it's gonna look good from other people doing RGB to HDMI it's still a night and day difference. I mean, every single pixel, this is ghouls and ghosts, every single single pixel is defined. It, it almost looks like an emulator. Like if you, you're probably second guessing it. You're like, Rich, aren't you just playing like, you know, a Sega Genesis emulator right now? Because it, it looks so clear. This is how much better the video quality is when you use RGB SCART. I cannot believe we didn't have this in the States. It's night and day compared to composite. If this was composite, you, you would think you would have cataracts in your eyes right now. Moving on to the next game. And here is some Streets of Rage 3, which I didn't play this as a kid, but this game is like my new crack addiction. It is such a good beat-em-up. Anyway, not the point of this video. Again, you know, this has more of that realistic color palette, as realistic as you get on the Genesis. But even if you look at like the background, the boxes in the background, you're just seeing details that would be like you could actually see way in the distance. You could see, you know, the storage boxes and it's compared to composite, which I know I played this game with composite just recently. You can't even it. It's not even in the same league. Oh, like you look at the floor, you could see the different colors that when Sega developed the game, you could see like they kind of have like that grayish color. You could see each damn pixel and it just, it does. It makes it, to me anyway, you know, it makes it more enjoyable. I, I cannot believe this is what the Sega Genesis was capable of in terms of its video output. And I love it. And you could see it right here, guys. It looks fantastic. And you know I had to show some Sonic footage. This is Sonic the Hedgehog 2, and look at the intro. It looks gorgeous. The blues, all the colors, there's no color bleeding. The reds look vivid. This is out of a bone stock Sega Genesis just going into the, the SCART HDMI converter and pumping it into my capture card. You can't compare it. If this was composite right now, even as good of a job as that composite HDMI converter does, it cannot hold a candle up to what you're seeing here. This is what an original Sega Genesis should look like. Anyone who says that it should look like crap has no idea what they're talking about. And you know what, to be honest, let me get off my soapbox for a second. I didn't know a bone stock Sega Genesis was capable of doing this. So, damn man, unreal. It just looks amazing. And once again, like I said a few minutes ago, it looks like it's coming from an emulator. That's how clear it is. Oh yeah, one thing I almost forgot to mention. If you look, you see that blue border around the screen? That was the overscan area. That's There's nothing wrong with the cartridge, there's nothing wrong with the HDMI converter, and there's nothing wrong with the RGB. And you'll see the little like colors dancing at the bottom of the screen when you're playing the game at least to me I don't it doesn't bother me just I'm, I'm pointing it out because I want to let everything be known here 
um, that was the overscan area that existed when you played it on, you know, a regular 4x3 tube TV back in the day, but you wouldn't see it. It was in the overscan area. Um, there's nothing wrong with the cartridge, that's just how it is. Alright guys, I think you've seen more than enough footage from the Sega Genesis, and I think I proved my point. Now it's time for me to give you my final thoughts. Alright guys, so I hope you found all this information and this demonstration of it interesting. Uh, two things, I don't want you to think this was just an advertising for what my father and I are doing. Uh, it was just, I was that blown away by the difference in picture quality. So if you want to go get this, you could find uh, SCAR to HDMI converter boxes on eBay I recommend it. Um, there's another gentleman on YouTube who has them on, he shows it on Amazon, but it's like a two-month wait. The guy I got him from on eBay, if I remember, I'll put a link in the description, but honestly, I don't think it's worth it because he only has a couple left, and you'll probably have to do a little digging. They're not that common, but this one works perfectly. There's zero lag, so if you just want to get this box, so this HDMI converter box with the SCART on it so you can hook them up to various consoles, there you go. I recommend it. It works great. The picture quality is fantastic, and there's zero input lag, so games are more than playable on it. Also, too, I made this video because a lot of people, like I said in my uh, previous video, is that this is what we're putting inside the consoles, um, at least ones that do have RGB, or at least it, it's feasible to put this box inside of. This is what we're going to put inside the Sega Genesis and have the HDMI mod based around this box. And again, the beauty of our mod is going to be is that it's all going to run off the original Sega Genesis power supply. We're waiting some parts to come in from China. Uh, God knows when they'll get here. That's why we couldn't do it this weekend like I planned. But this is the true HDMI mod that we're doing that, like I said, you're just going to be able to run them off the original Sega Genesis power supply, hook up an HDMI cord to the port behind it, and plug in your Sega Genesis like it's a PlayStation 4. This is what we originally intended, and these are the visuals that we originally intended to get. And once this is ready to go, and once we have these systems modded, we'll let you guys know. All right, folks, this is Rich of Review Tech USA signing out. Make sure to rate, comment, favorite, and subscribe. And as always, thank you for supporting my channel. Have a good one.